Hello, I'm Shalala Wen. This is the seventh video of my Deepen 2020 series where I'm offering some teachings and then a guided meditation to lead you into the spaces that I've been teaching about. And I'm really liking doing it this way. Um, it's an organic response. Uh, each time I do a meditation, it's usually a response to things I've been processing and seeing in my own process. And also in sessions with women, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, usually about uh, six or seven a week, and also two monthly group calls, in addition to correspondence that I do on social media. So I have uh, kind of a foot in the pulse of of awakening and what people are experiencing especially women and especially on the emotional body level and yet also on the soul level as well so these are the areas that I kind of got my feelers into we could say um, and then what I feel might be helpful in these meditations is what I'm offering these meditations, I'm amazed at how deep many of you can go with them, just in a 15 minute meditation. And they are meant as a bridge to a whole reality, a whole multidimensional reality of parts of the self and parts of the soul, these fragments of our soul that are in all of these different timelines and lifetimes, not past at all, but yet really in the now. And so this is the work that I offer in sessions. This is what I write about. This is where I live my way of life from. And it's called Soulful Heart. And I would say that if you're having quite a deep experience with these videos, I would encourage you to feel into having a session because in this session, that's when, that's when I can really feel with you specifically how to apply what it is that I'm offering. And then we can go into a meditative space together. It's very collaborative and I think very unique in that way. And you're leading the discovery. I'm asking questions. I'm bringing in framing from my experience. I'm um, bringing in different divine energies if necessary for support. And it's really a self-empowering process. So that's for women with me. And then if you're a man, my beloved Raphael works with men in the same process and also with women. So if you're a woman that's drawn to have a very open, beautiful, masculine heart hold space for you, especially if you've had a lot of wounded masculine experiences, and trauma from that, I can highly recommend Raphael for that. So I just wanted to start with the sessions piece because I don't, I don't talk about it as often, but it really is the core of this process. And these videos are really a taste of it. It's, it's like an appetizer before the main meal and the main meal is very rich and deep. So if that draws you, I have information below in the description on how to contact us to schedule a session. So one piece that I have been working personally for a lot of years and also felt many times in session space is the what I call the punisher and corresponding shame dynamic inside of us. And I do feel this is a result of a reaction from 3D reality, which is so polarized. It is so much judgment of this against that. It's dualistically charged in that way. So very often one thing is better than another thing. Uh, good versus evil, black versus white. You know, there's so many examples of this. So we come into this 3D reality and that's what we kind of hit energetically is this very judgmental energy. And I distinguish judgment from discernment by the degree of love that is present. So judging something or even ourselves, how, 
how much love is present when we're doing that. So this isn't anything against discerning because we do need to discern. We do need to evaluate and feel what what is good for us or not. Um, and we're doing that intuitively all the time. Yet it's different when I talk about judgment or I talk about the inner punisher. What I'm speaking to is it leaves a residue. It leaves a feeling. I used to call it barbed wire soup. Like that's how severe it was for parts of me where it would literally feel like I was swallowing barbed wire soup and it didn't necessarily have to come from the outside, anybody else's judgment of me. It was happening on the inside. This was a big piece of my process for a number of years, is working with this energy that would make me feel like I was wrong or bad or ugly or stupid or didn't get it or behind or lazy. I mean, you name it, the judgments were there and they were inherited from my culture, from my conditioning, um, from my birth family who could be very critical and judgmental of me. So all of that got internalized, which I believe is what happens to so many of us sensitive empaths with so much Claire, Claire abilities. Um, I was particularly born with them. I, I didn't even realize it. I just called it make-believe, but it was a very, very active um, third eye, especially third eye and clairaudience as well and clairvoyance. So all of that sensitivity hit this judgment and this criticism. And I could grab this part. I have, I've had many punishers over the years that I worked with. Um, this part is critical, I feel to our process of ascension because whenever there is judgment of self especially and there's a corresponding shame reaction there is an immediate lowering of our frequency uh, talk about everyone wants to raise their frequency a huge piece of it is tracking and feeling and healing this inner punisher shame looping and one thing that has been fascinating to me over the years is to really discover inside of myself and with other people why this punisher shame looping exists. And it isn't, um, it isn't actually about making ourselves feel worse, although it does make us feel worse most of the time when it's going on, but it's actually a protection mechanism so it's kind of like the punishers have told me and my own have have told me this too um, if i can insult you judge you put you down lower your frequency first then when it comes from the outside it doesn't hurt as much and it's been a necessity to keep you lower frequency to keep you safe now if we had received validation and acceptance and support and initiation all of the energies we're trying to offer ourselves now as a loving parent then we wouldn't have developed an inner punisher we would have just been able to discern what worked for us or didn't work for us what resonated or didn't resonate there wouldn't be the charge there wouldn't be the feeling that something was wrong with us but I really feel that we had to develop this inner punisher protector energy because of what was coming at us. And then as you feel that with the punisher inside of you and you forgive them because you begin to really compassionately feel what they've been up against, something starts to soften. Because the other dynamic here is, so there's the punisher I found and then there's a shame energy, a reaction that comes up. Sometimes it's from a different part. So you can have the inner punisher shaming a inner child or the inner child is the one that receives it, you know, or the inner teenager, kind of a combination. They receive like, I am awful. I am, I am wrong. I'm stupid, you know, and that dynamic, even just that dynamic, if you can identify which part is punishing, which part is, is receiving the shame can be a huge eye opener. Actually, it can move a lot because what you're doing is getting in between 
that dynamic. So it's not just a loop. It's not a cycle that is unconscious to you, but you're aware, whoa, there's my punisher. There's the part that it's impacting, right? There's the part it's ultimately protecting, it turns out. Shame transmutes to innocence, unworthiness and feeling stupid and, and valuable and all those feelings transmute to a sense of goodness and worth about ourselves. The punisher transmutes to discerner and intuition and ability to set boundaries and tell truth. Every part of us has a very important service for us, but it's been distorted or twisted to the degree that it's been receiving so much 3D conditioning. It doesn't really know any better. So what we're trying to do is get in that dynamic consciously, offer a loving parental energy, a forgiving energy, having the divine help us do that to our punishers so they can start to move toward discernment with love, intuition with care, boundary setting with empathy, you know, all of those things. And they can stop attacking and creating shame in this younger part because the younger part is, you know, they feel magical and good. So <clears throat> they're not even receiving it anymore in the same way. And this is what we're really trying to shift is this dynamic. So sometimes it really is, <clears throat> excuse me, it really is a punisher and another part. Other times it is the punisher shaming itself. Um, as you work with the punisher part of you, you begin to sort this out where they actually are deeply punishing themselves. And that's why they feel so awful all the time. And then as they realize what they've been doing and how they've been impacting other parts of you, they feel more layers of shame and judgment. So the really the key to all of this is forgiveness. And I'm, I'm speaking exclusively inside here. Because I think this is where the challenge is. There's so much out there about forgive everybody else. But yet this forgiveness process, when it's applied inside to these parts that truly feel that they do not deserve to be forgiven, and they have all kinds of reasons they will tell you about, yet if you can still discover in your heart a inner forgiveness, this really shifts everything in how you perceive yourself and how you perceive life, how you show up for relationships and what kind of relationships you draw. So you can forgive everyone else, but if this process hasn't happened inside, it's going to continue to feel quite suffering inside of you. And this is something, as I talked about um, my own punisher process, at this point and for the last I'd say a few years, I'm not really capable anymore. I don't have any energy in me anymore to judge myself, to punish any parts of me. It's like if I try to go down that track, there's no there there. And this isn't just some miracle of my attainment. This is a lot of processing and feeling and forgiving of these parts of myself, exactly what I'm describing to you. When I tell people that I don't, I don't experience judgment and shame anymore, they're sort of astounded um, because they live under it all the time. But again, this isn't, this is the miracle of love in another way, but it, but it's not out of bounds to you. It's not as if I have some special attainment. What I have done is loved these parts out of these trauma loops, out of these behaviors and into love. So there, so when I'm discerning something, when I'm feeling something out, and this happens all the time, we still need to discern things. I do it all the time in sessions. I'm doing it right now. What do I include? What do I talk about? Where's the meditation going to go? That needs to be clear especially if you're, if you're serving love, it gets clearer and clearer to the degree that the punishment drops. As the judgment drops, your access to clarity. And people will say to me, you know, how do you have so much wisdom? It just comes through so clear. Well, an aspect of that is that my wisdom was held up. 
in this punisher shame dynamic i couldn't get to it for a number of years it would peekaboo through but not in a flow because my punisher who's such a key aspect of accessing and sharing that wisdom was caught up in judging so what energy are these parts of you caught up in and helping them i call it unwind so they may be all tight in these judgments and the energy feels dense and tight and really um, sometimes quite miserable um, and then also what can happen is then you draw judgments from the outside from people it lands in your punisher and your punisher takes it in and then serves it to your to the shame part or the the young part so that's another loop that can be very painful um, if I receive criticism now, you know, I'm, I'm on public, I'm on social media, I share a lot. If I, I don't get kicked very often, I think that's because of the healing I've done, so I don't need to be kicked. But if I get some comment, I just, I really do send the person love and I move on. It doesn't bring me into a spiral of self-doubt or insecurity or wondering what I'm doing because I don't have a corresponding part of me that questions me in that way. So that's something to look at too. I know it feels sometimes if you're judged by somebody else, especially awakening people, are judged, especially by friends and family and mates who are not awakening with you. So you do receive judgment, you do get their fear, you do get projected onto. They are wondering if you're crazy. I, I've worked with many women who have had that plainly said to them um, almost their whole lives. So there is a realness of that coming at you. So then how has it been internalized? It's not just about, okay, cut out all those relationships, but also look at how has, what part of you thinks you're crazy? What part of you agrees with your family on this one? What part of you wishes that you wouldn't awaken because it's just going to draw more judgment? That's the energy to be with. That's where your power is because as you work on that inner ground and those dialogues and conversations and barragements and fights and conflicts happening inside, as you heal that and clear that, it does change what you draw on the outside and what you're drawn to. The only reason we have someone in our life is as a mirror. So if they're mirroring to us that we're crazy or they're judging us, they're not getting us, they're not resonant with us, some part of us agrees with them. Or there wouldn't be any, any grist there. And yet it also then turns into more suffering loop. If you have a lot of people in your life like that right now, it's really something to look at why. And again, what parts of you agree with them and um, are on even the same page? And that is where I find the real work is. So it's not about changing your family so they'll get you or just unconditionally loving and accepting them no matter how they are or how they treat you. That can be a really tricky one too, as I've talked about before. It's really looking at the impact that then shows you something about yourself inside. So that's probably a good teaching on that. And now we'll go in. I'm going to, I have a basic inner punisher meditation that I'll share below. So I do recommend doing that one first if you haven't met your punisher before. This one, we're going to go deeper and work with the punisher and then the corresponding shame energies and see where that takes us. So go ahead and close your eyes. I'll catch my breath here. Start to bring your focus inward. You may already feel something stirring here in what I shared.
we'll bring in white, just pure white light today and create a very white and bright space an energetic space that even though these things can be hard to feel that we're safe to feel them and I see Mother Mary today as she's so forgiving she's such a compassionate energy I've worked with her for many years with my punishers and they just kind of melt in her heart space um, as does the part that's being shamed, the innocent part. So Mary is here, her big beaming heart. And I also see Yeshua or Christ and he is also very compassionate and forgiving he received so much judgment and is able to transmute it with his forgiveness so he's a wonderful template for this most punishers are masculine i find at least they start out that way so i do feel it's a wounded masculine energy that creates this punishment and judgment so with Yeshua and Mary, we'll move now down a path. Together. We reach a clearing. And that clearing is your castle. As I've said before, this castle represents you. I would say it's kind of your hidden world, your inner world. Take a moment to let this castle in. Maybe it's not a castle at all, it's something else, some other kind of structure. And we're going to tune in to specifically this punisher and shame dynamic. So we're going to ask, ask your inner punisher to show you where they are. I usually find them with people in dark spaces. Um, down in the dungeon, in a dark room, in a cave. I've seen torture chambers, I've seen prisons. This is the energy they've taken in. It's harsh. And we're bringing light to it in this moment and love. So if you can be brave in your heart to meet them where they are, find them. As you enter this dark space with them, see if you can tune into what they look like. They may be a bit shrouded from you or in shadow. If they don't want to come forward, that's okay. You can ask them to come in. What I'm seeing actually now, if we are in a dark space, I'm seeing that we have a little, um, excuse me, <clears throat> a little candle with us like we're holding tapers it looks like 
um, I'm holding one and you are and Mary and Yeshua are. So there's this illumination coming into this, this space that feels important in this moment. It's not blaring, glaring light. It's illumination. And we're asking your punisher to come forward into that warmth. They may have a weapon. Ask them how, what's their primary means of, of punishing. Maybe it's through words, judgments, of, judgments about performance or body or money or service. Maybe they'll show you their domain where there's the most reactions. As you take that in, you may connect that to your childhood, to your parents and the way they were with you. You may even be feeling this on a soul level too, as a soul pattern. Ask your punisher anything you'd like to know about why they punish. What is the purpose? You may hear the answer. You may, they may show you a picture. You may not get much in this moment from them and that's okay. You can come back to it. You may hear something like to keep you safe because other people are judging you so I had to. Those are some of the common answers. I didn't want you to get too big. We're going to ask your punisher now if they would show us the part of you that creates shame in response to them, that feels shame, that they are, they are judging. So if you see in this dark room, maybe the punisher is on the right and there's a part on the left that we're going to ask to come forward. And this, this is the part that holds the shame. So it's probably young, an inner child. You may, you may see a teenager. They may be very shy and feel Pretty bad about themselves, uncertain, insecure, self-conscious. And we're going to invite this part that feels shame to start to receive this light and warmth. from Mary and Yeshua and you. And they may be, like I said, shy. We just want them to begin to feel the separation from this Punisher energy, which they may be afraid of.
So you can pause here if you want to and go deeper into this, this shame part and feeling them and, and where they come from. And we'll also invite the, the connection with your inner punisher as well. You can feel them some more, deepen that relationship. And also feel the relationship between the two. You may be looking at a, at a father-daughter dynamic here, or a father-teenager, or a previous mate, husband. Just notice how they show up together. And Mary and Yeshua are happy and open to stay in this room with them or cave or wherever you are and keep this light glowing and the warmth. And also these parts are welcome and invited to go into the light and outside if they are ready for that when they are ready for that shame of course tends to retract away from being seen and revealed so usually there's connection needed with that part and that energy before they can come out. <laughs> so I just feel a lot of tenderness and love and forgiveness toward both of these parts. Toward the punisher who is doing everything they could to survive in a harsh world. And to the shame, the beautiful innocence just received what they were told. So keeping this light in your heart toward these parts of you, go ahead and open your eyes. And wherever that took you, maybe even into some tears, I hope it was a useful beginning journey for you because it's a very helpful connection to make inside of yourself. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.